Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Superhero Chronicles and today we're going to be covering the 2012 animated movie Justice League Doom starring the all-star cast of Kevin Conroy as Batman, Tim Daly who voiced Superman in the original Superman animated series, Wonder Woman, not Wonder Woman, Susan Eisenberg as Wonder Woman who had voiced her previously in the Justice League TV show, uh, Carl Lumbly who had previously voiced the Martian Manhunter, and of course, Phil Morris as Vandal Savage, with the, with supporting cast that includes Bumper Robinson as Cyborg. <clears throat> uh, right off the bat, I want to make it very clear that this is a it's not a great it's not no it's not the greatest thing you'll ever see, but it is a damn enjoyable movie. It has you know the voice acting all around is top notch, the action sequences are fun to watch, and the story is is not too bad. It could have been done a little bit better. This is, of course, based on a Justice League comic book called Tower of Babylon, which I never read, but I did do a little bit of research on it. But this ain't going to be a compare and contrast. This is just going to be my thoughts on the movie at hand, which is right over here. So, pretty much, uh, the whole synopsis of this thing is the Justice League are under, is under attack by Vandal Savage. By Bandle Savage, who has stole Batman's contingency plans to immobilize the Justice League as his way to wipe out the Justice League and pretty much uh, have world domination. That's pretty much the whole uh, uh, synopsis of this thing. There's more, but that's just the general broad. But we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to stick down to the bare basics. Uh, what I do like about this movie is that this shows just how paranoid Batman really is to the point where he devises contingency plans mobilize the Justice League if they would ever go rogue. Like, and I'm going to nail it, and I'm going to tell you this right now. Uh, for Wonder Woman, you know, he had he devised these, he uh, he has these things, these like these little nano machines that attach to her uh, brainstem or bloodstream, and it causes her to hallucinate to hallucinate her arch rival Cheetah, and of course Wonder Woman was is just it, is constantly just fighting, fighting and fighting and fighting, and and of course. The, if she keeps on fighting, then eventually her heart's going to give out and she's going to drop dead. Uh, for the Green Lantern, Batman, you know, has like a concentrated dose of Scarecrow's uh, fear gas, which causes uh, Hal Jordan to hallucinate that he's that he's failed a mission or failed to rescue someone, and it pretty much breaks his will. For Superman, he basically has the kryptonite bullet. For those who know Superman, you know what a kryptonite bullet can do to him. It's not it's nothing nothing new. For uh, the Martian Manhunter, he has this thing, he has this uh, Magnevian carbrain, which screws up Martians by uh, the Martian biology. And of course, you know, in order for Martian to like, you know, uh, to get it, to get over it, he has to sweat it out. And uh, for did I go from there? Oh, well, oh, oh, that's it. Uh, those are yeah. So yeah, so yeah, Batman is a uh, now. In the movie, these plans were meant to immobilize, but when Vandal Savage, you know, gets a hold of them, he, you know, executes them in a way to kill. How they were originally supposed to immobilize is beyond me because these plans, because, you know, you got a kryptonite bullet. Uh, your guess is as good as mine how these are meant to immobilize and not kill. And I think Batman is uh, kind of like, you know, being a little too, uh, little too uh, nice over there. Oh, his version of nice, I should say. But yeah, <clears throat> uh, there's some incons there's some like things that you just gotta like nitpick. Okay, like how are these plans meant to immobilize? <sighs> if they're being designed, to, if they're clearly designed to kill, so it's like you know, it's plot holes like that, which will take away great. Uh, which will, 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 will just gonna take away points from this thing because it's kind of implausible. But anyway, <clears throat> as a as a greater whole, you know. This movie is relatively well done. It's not really well written. It's not, like I said, it's not the best written movie, but it is really good time. And I do like, you know, the bantering between the East members of the Justice League. Um, again, I like Batman's character of him, of how you just see his paranoia. Uh, I also like the, the Vandal Savage as a villain who has really grown on me in the last couple of years as, a, as being one of my favorite DC villains. So. I like Phil Morris as Vandal Savage. He has such a commanding presence, such a commanding voice, and he really gives Vandal some like that sense of like regalness and uh, savage uh, and savageness. No pun intended. 
And I also like uh, the members that they chose, you know, for Vandal's Legion of Doom, which consists of Cheetah, Wonder Woman's villain, uh, Metallo, a Superman villain, uh, Malafaha, a uh, Martian Manhunter villain, and of course we got Mirror Master, who's a Flash villain, uh, Star Sapphire, who works for, who is connected to Green Lantern, and of course Bane, the man who broke the bat. And I like how these villains you know, have a chance to neutralize their respective rivals. Uh, of course, what Batman, do, what, what Bane does to Batman is is uh, ridiculous. Uh, pretty much Batman's weakness is his parents, and Bane pretty much exploited that weakness when he forced, where he, pre, where he, can, where he pretty much tricked Alfred into believing that, uh, that his, that, you know, Bruce Wayne's his parents were being exhumed from their graves, and that was how Bane was able to ambush Batman and pretty much burying him alive with his parents still in their grave. So yeah, that's you know a dark moment in the film, seeing the corpses and everything like that. So you know that was all fighting good. Uh, the movie has these little references which are pretty cool too. Like they reference Nightfall when Bane says, "I've been trying to hurt. I broke the bat once, and I'll do it again." Something like that. And, and uh, like I said, the band trains movie is pretty well done. Uh, Alfred, played by Rob Robin Atkin Downs, has a lot of funny lines. His first introduction scene is when he's talking to uh, Bruce, and Ralph is like, "You need some rest and some sleep, and stitches." And Bruce is like, "Let's get this over with." And then Alfred's like, "That part about stitches, that was sarcasm." So yeah, so like, Robin Atkin Downs has uh, has some of that dry humor going on with Alfred, and I like it a lot. It really plays in the world. I really, really like it a lot. Like I said, and of course, this movie is brilliantly animated, and the action scenes are really, really well done. That opening, you know, I think five, ten minutes, when the Just League takes on the Royal Flesh Gang, gang uh, has nothing to do with the rest of the movie, but it is fun to look at. It is fun to watch, and it is a really cool fight scene, seeing, that, seeing everyone in the Justice League show their powers, show their strengths in this thing, in this in the opening pull-up, which was fine. Uh, Cyborg's in this movie, but Cyborg doesn't really do much. Uh, the only thing Cyborg really does is um, he neutralizes Wonder Woman, and then he helps the Justice League foil Vandal's plans. Really want to know, you could have taken Cyborg out and placed him with anybody, and it would have been the same movie. Cyborg serves no purpose. And I'm actually one in the camp of people who don't really care for the whole cramming and forcing of Cyborg into the Justice League, because... To me, he just to me he doesn't really fit into the Justice League. Like, you got the Justice League who are like people who are like maybe you could say thirty five to forty five, and Cyborg is essentially this you know kid, like a twenty twenty five year old, being crammed in with these you know adults who've been active, let's say you know ten fifteen years, maybe twenty years plus. So I was like, yeah, this, it's kind of weird seeing him there, and then. It's also he's and he's also extremely underutilized for you cyborg fans. This is not the move for you because cyborg doesn't really do a damn thing. And uh, and of course, Vandal Savage's grand scheme to you know dominate the world. Pretty much, he has this device that he's going to use to er eradicate pretty much half the world, and then he's going to like rebuild it in his own image. And he promises to give you know. The le members of the Legion of Doom, their own respective quadrants, uh, um, domains to to rule over. Of course, at first they're they're not they're not into it, but of course they have no choice but to go along with it. And eventually they do. But of course they're eventually stopped by the Justice League, who devise a plan to stop Savage and restore balance to the Earth and blah blah blah. Of course, the thing I like the best is the ending of this movie, where we get to the end and Batman explains his actions. And the Justice League are like, you know, we will never do that. And then Batman is just like, if you people think that you cannot do that, then I'm leaving. Pretty much, and that this that scene pretty much made them pretty much made everyone in the Justice League look stupid, and it made Batman look smart. Uh, I'm a huge Batman fan, but you're making Batman uh, a little too smart for his own good, and you're making the Justice League members uh, too stupid for their own good. But the only two people that actually, to me, the only two people that actually, like, agree with him are Green Lantern. And we see Superman agrees with him because, you know, he gives Batman the kryptonite bullet just in case. But before that, Superman asks a question, who neutralizes Batman? 
but that Batman says that his plan for himself is the Justice League. So, even though he devised these plans to immobilize the Justice League to say if they ever went rogue or got mind controlled, but at the same time, he still respects them because if he would have ever go out of control, he would have expects them to neutralize him. So he's there's still a, there's still a respect that he has for the members of the league, and of course, the friendship between him and Superman, which I which I always found which I always liked it being very understated and not in your face that they're friends, but that common neutral uh, mutual respect they have for one another was beautifully played out in the end when, he, when Superman handed him the, the kryptonite bullet, which I like. So yeah, that's my take on Justice League Doom. At the end of the day, it is a blast to watch. Good voice acting, solid action scenes, really good animation, and for the most part, the story is, you know, even though it's, it's a little bit chunk, it's a little bit, uh, you know, clunky in areas, is overall okay. And I'm going to give this movie solid, I'm going to give it a solid 7.5 out of 10. It's very enjoyable to watch, and it's an easy, and, it, and, it's, a, and it's a breeze. It goes by in a flash. No pun intended. Oh, wait, I forgot. <laughs> flash was in this movie. Uh, Batman's playing for the Flash. He pretty much puts a bomb in his wrist, and if, and if Flash stops running or does nothing, the bomb will explode and kill people within a three-mile radius. That's the Flash. Just remembered it just now when I did this stupid pun. God damn it. Anyway, that's my take on Justice League Doom. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll check you back next time for more.